Well, welcome to the Flipping and Wholesaling Houses in New York show. I am Michael Pinter, where I teach you how to start flipping and wholesaling houses in New York, or if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. Let me tell you the three biggest problems that I have had with wholesaling deals, okay? So they really are pretty standard. The first is seller problems, right? Problems coming from the seller. The second are contract problems where you're caught in the middle. And the third are buyer problems. Now you've got to understand when you're wholesaling, you are in the middle, right? You are representing things to the seller and the buyer may screw you over and not allow you to, to do what you say you're going to do. You are representing things to the buyer and the seller can screw you over. And also sometimes there's discrepancies in the contract. So let's go through some of these. So seller problems are you tell a buyer we can close and then the seller calls and says, you know what, I'm not ready to close. Or the seller said he was going to clean the place and you told the buyer it would be clean and the seller didn't clean it. Or there's a tenant and the t seller tells you the tenant's going to be out and the tenant's not out. These things happen. So I remember one, ha one time I had a problem. Seller said he cleaned the place. Um, buyer said, I want to clean. I said, no problem, seller's going to clean it. Get to the day before the closing, seller says, yeah, I'll clean it after. I'm like, well, what? And it was a big deal. I think it was a six-figure deal. And I had to hire. I hired a bunch of people from standing in front of Home Depot. I bought a big truck. I got some brooms, a lot of garbage bags, and I just had these guys come in and just clean the place out. But then the seller said, oh, some of the stuff, the seller was a hoarder. So, so I need some of this stuff to go with me. I need some of this stuff to go to a uh, storage facility. And I said, whatever the hell you want, just tell me where to put it. I said, the stuff that goes with you, we'll put in one part of the truck. And I had to literally do these things. And these are things you do to make money, right? It's a business decision. Um, but these are the kinds of seller problems you can have where a seller represents something to you. And then the seller just doesn't understand that he has to do what he said he's going to do. Sorry, my laptop is perched on something. That's not very standard, very sal solid. <coughs> okay. Another problem that comes up is a buyer problem, which is obvious, right? Buyer says he's going to close, get to the day before the closing, buyer says he can't close. Sorry, my lender needs more time. Sorry, I changed my mind. Sorry, whatever the hell it is. I need four more days. These things happen. Um, they suck, but you got to go tell a seller, sorry, can't close. Seller gets pissed off. I recently had a problem like that. I had to delay a closing about a week. Seller was not happy, but these things happen. You are really stuck in the middle when you are uh, wholesaling, right? On some level, it's, and my, the great Greg Helbeck has said before, on some level, it's easier just to close, right? Well, you're the part, you're the buyer. You just close, and it's simple. Um, of course, after that, it gets complicated, and you don't get paid, and the clock starts. But the fact that you're the middleman, the fact that you are really representing things to each side that other somebody out of your control has to do, makes things complicated, right? So buyers do these things all the time. Now, it really takes us to the to the next section, which we're going to talk about at length which is the contract and the document. So you really need a good, a good attorney to draw up the contract because you should, in my opinion, make every assignment, right? Remember, you're gonna, just to, to go through how it goes. Sales attorneys are gonna draw up a contract, send it to your attorney. You're gonna sign it, make sure it's assignable. And if it's not assignable, there are ways around it, but let's just assume it's assignable. And then your attorney is gonna uh, send an assignment document to the buyer. That's also good, probably gonna have a copy of the underlying contract so he understands what, um, what, you, what, my, what, what the signer's obligations are going to be based on what the seller's obligations are in the contract. So does it have to be vacant? Does it have to be clean? These are the things that you want to see. So um, that assignment, really, the wording is very important. So you, you, you're going to word it as I like to do it as time of the essence by a certain date. So the buyer has to close by a certain date if the seller is ready. Now, if the seller is not ready, I need more time. So that is complicated language. And I would say that it's important um, that you have an attorney that understands that he needs to make it difficult for the buyer to just flake out. If the buyer does want to flake out when you're ready, then you should be able to take keep his deposit. It's not a simple thing in New York. It sounds simple. I've taken people's deposit, but it's, it, it really depends on the, on the wording of the contract, of the assignment. So what happens sometimes is you get caught in the middle because of maybe something verbally. So I've had situations where I told the seller, listen, you don't have to clean it, I'll clean it. But the contract said it's going to be broom clean. Now, if you, I was buying that, that would be great. I would tell the seller, sorry, you told me it was going to be broom clean, now signed. Maybe you have to clean it. Or maybe I wouldn't, but at least it would be up to me. But what happens sometimes is you told the seller he can leave it, uh, all his crap there, and then you assign the contract that said it's broom clean, and now you're responsible to make it broom clean, like the story I told you before. So you have to be very careful about your contracts. In some ways, if you are assigning the contract, you don't want to, in general, if you're buying something, you want to obligate the seller to do as much as he can. But if you are... If you are assigning the contract, then you have to be careful what the seller is obligated because you're going to be obligated to do that. So it's very careful that you go through the contract. Standard contracts in New York have clause 26, which says no assignability. So that's something you need to be on top of. 
I, I know everybody, the gurus say, oh, if a contract doesn't say it's not assignable, it's not assignable. New York contracts are not assignable. So it's important. Sorry, my eyes bother me. That's why I'm the glasses. Um, it's important that you're very careful about what is um, what the seller is obligated to because when you sign an assignment, then you're obligated to make sure those things happen. So you need a really good attorney that's going to be careful about the, the wording of the contract that you're signing to buy and the wording of the assignment that you're signing. And you don't want to be caught in the middle because sometimes that's the third thing, you get caught in the middle where you're obligated to do something that the seller may not be. And people just came, so we have to cut this short. Uh, but the, that's basically the gist of uh, what you have to be careful when you're wholesaling. Those are the problems that I've come up with wholesaling. Um, I hope this was helpful. I want to keep talking, but there's someone standing right next to me that's bugging the hell out of me. So, um, uh, if this, uh, so if you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com. If you're interested in finding more about one-on-one -on -one coaching, go to coaching.howtoflipnewyork.com. If you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching on any media channel, please give a thumbs up. The likes really help me uh, with my SEO, my search engine optimization. And please keep the comments coming. I post five times a week and I don't always know what to say. So any comment is helpful. Um, it can be about anything, doesn't even have to be a video you're watching. And if it's a simple uh, reply, I'll just reply with an answer. If it's simple, a simple answer to your question. If it's something I've covered before, I'll send you links to video, a video or videos on it. And if you, are, if you ask me something new or something I haven't covered in a while, I'll do a new video on it. Thank you very, very much for watching.